Bonus. The Grief Bully Podcast will serve as a vehicle to help you navigate life's journey. Be sure to subscribe, review, and share the podcast with anyone in your life that you think it will help. Let's bully grief together. What's up? What's up? What's up, beautiful people? Welcome back to another episode of the Grief Bully Podcast. I am your host, Jay Nicole. Today is Monday, March 2nd, and we are in the studio again for another episode. This is episode 29. 29 weeks in a row, guys. I always talk about that. But listen, if you check my track record with consistency, I'm not always the most consistent with my passion projects. So I'm very proud that I have been able to be consistently showing up here for you all and for myself each and every week. Last week, I was in here for a solo round. And this week, I am back in the studio, but I am not by myself. I am excited today. I have a special guest with me. In the South Jersey area and beyond, some people might call her Brenda, Brenda Phillips, but we know her around here as Miss We Care. <laughs> so we got Miss We Care in the building. Brenda, what's up? How you feeling? I feel really, really good. I'm so grateful to be here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. We are excited to have Brenda here. She is very, very impactful, making a huge impact in the, in the area, especially in the lives of our young people. We have connected a few years back and just, you know, kept in touch and just been, you know, supporting each other the best way we possibly can. I've noticed a couple of things about her mission and things that I admire and respect. And I'm like, listen, if I have a platform anywhere we continue to share each other's stories, impact each other and make some sort of change and progress for ourselves and for other people, because the grief bully is not just for me or for, you know, random people to just, you know, follow us and all that good stuff. The thing is to provide a platform for people to share their stories that they might not have shared normally anywhere else so we do want to get into that last week guys please go download that episode if you haven't already had a chance to do so we are on youtube now so that's a big change we're on youtube yeah (laughs) we're on youtube now so you'll be able to see the episodes live which is definitely next level to be able to visually see the conversation in which we are having so we have brenda here today we're going to talk about Her story, you know, some of the things that I think align when it comes to grief and then just some of the great things she has going on in an area that we definitely want to highlight and and show what's going on with that. So first, we did at Walking You Soon Show. You feeling all right? I'm feeling really good today. Actually, today has been one of my better days. So I'm feeling amazing today. Um, Just looking forward. I think we had spoke. My grandfather passed away. His funeral, ironically, is tomorrow. Uh, but my sisters and brothers are in town, so I'm really excited about that because, you know, it's a bittersweet moment, but I never get to spend uh, that personal quality time with my siblings, and um, I'm, ha- I'm going to be happy to see them tomorrow. That's that's all great stuff. Listen, we always talk about that. Funerals, unfortunately, are that double-edged sword, that yeah. catch-22, where it's like you see people that you typically wouldn't see, yeah. and the circumstances are not great, but fortunately – you do have that opportunity to bond with them to see them and to catch up. So right. we definitely our condolences to you in terms of your loss. So you will be having to attend a funeral soon. So this is the thing. I think when I talk to a lot of people about grief and I've even had some people reach out to be on the show. And then when they realize what the content is about, yeah. they switch it up like, oh, wait, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not ready. Re- I'm not ready for all that. I'm not really <laughs> yeah, trying to yeah. get into all that. Mm-hmm. But the thing about grief is this. Not, and, and if there's nothing else that I want to highlight throughout having this platform and everything I do is that grief itself is just defined as deep sorrow. Right. And, and I don't say just be, as if it's a, a small thing, but it means deep sorrow. So it's not always specifically the loss of people to right. death. It could be anything, any terms of loss that causes you deep sorrow. However, my mission is more so geared towards the aftermath of and the healing process and the journey of loss of loved ones. But we like to highlight everything. So I know you've experienced your fair share of loss. And one thing that definitely has stood out to me when I've followed you is that you talk about your grandmother a lot. I do. And and I and I vibe with that because my grandmother was my baby. That was my, my love, you right. know. So when I saw you recently, that's what kind of triggered me to reach out about having you on the show is that you, you talk about her a lot. And I've noticed that her name is Brenda, so I want to get into that mm-hmm. and just see, you know, where we are with those things. So if you want to just share a little bit about your deep sorrow, your experience in terms of, you know, let's just start with that, losing your grandmother. Um, so just when it came to my grandmother, like I had a very traumatic childhood. Um, 
uh, both of my parents were addicts, and my grandmother was just that one person that was there the best way that she knew how to be. And for me, there's like God, and then there was like my grandmother. You, Amen. you understand what I'm saying? I like, feel you. It was like in my eyes, she literally could do no wrong, do no harm. That's not who I knew. All I knew was the woman who loved purely and literally would do anything for you, any possibly, any possible way that she could. And my grandmother, she passed away in um, 2010 from cancer. And um, I was very close to my grandmother. I was her namesake. So there was big Brenda and I. For I still get called Little Brenda. Uh, my family. <laughs> That's a good thing, right? That's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, right? my family still calls me Little Brenda, um, which I I just receive it with open arms. Um, and when I lost her, it was very very it was very difficult. Um, I was in a place in my life. I wasn't in the best place in my life. So she was kind of seeing like the before of what I am now, and um. One thing she used to always say to me before she even got sick, she used to say to me, because like I was like a very angry teenager. I was very hurt, very scarred. Um, and she used to always say to me, you have to forgive. You have to, she used to say to me, you have to forgive my mother in particular. And she say, you have to forgive your mother or you're never going to get anywhere in life. Wow. Is and, that her uh, daughter? Her daughter. Okay. Which is, yes, um... So I never understood what she really meant by that because just at that time I was just going through the motions of life and really not even understanding the – to even have purpose, what that even meant. You know, I think I was probably like 22, 23. And um, the the last day she was actually able to speak, it was all of us in her room. It had to be like 16 of us in Jefferson. And um, I was just so – oh, God, I was falling apart. And I was like one of the last people to walk out of, like to head out. And she and well, I was the last person to head out. And she said, "Come here." And I turned back around because I was like in tears as I was walking out. And she, um, like I grabbed her hand and she looked at me and she was like, "Listen, now you have my name and you have to live up to it." And I just I carry that with me everywhere that I go. And being as though that I know that, um, like I said. It's God and then it's her, right? To me, the life that she lived was just a, a pure, loving life. She would do anything for anybody. And I knew when she had left this earth, I wasn't in my best space. And she didn't see me in that best space. But my grandmother always believed in me. She always spoke life into me. She always nurtured me. She always let me know that this is temporary. This is very, very temporary, you know, and... These emotions, these things that you're going through, this this is going to be the past soon. And once again, I didn't understand those things in those moments. But it's so crazy now that she's not here. I wish that she just could witness. And I know that she's witnessing it from above. But I just wish that I could just share moments. You know what I mean? Like um, when I had got my first award a couple years ago, I dedicated the entire speech to her. You know, so um, I just thank her. God, I thank her for watering me along the years, you know, and I hope that, you know, she's proud of me from watching me bloom. You yeah, know? I'm I'm sure. I'm sure she's proud of you. <laughs> We're proud of you. And I think you said I mean, you said so much there. I'm trying to to take it all in and to process <laughs> it and to, and to make sure that I don't miss anything. But I, I wonder what. So I always talk about that, that sometimes it's like. When we grieve a loss, we, we don't just grieve that one loss of the person, right? So we grieve the loss of them in terms of death. Mm -hmm. But then we, we lose and we grieve so much of what they meant to us. Mm -hmm. And then, similar to what you're saying, I've experienced that as well, where you've accomplished so much and you're just like, man, like, all of this is so good. But, but so, like, we can talk about that in terms of when they say, like, a lot of people are afraid to lean into joy. It's right. because on the other side of joy is pain. Right. So how did you balance the two of, you know, being on this journey, accomplishing these things, you have these joy moments, and then the pain of your grandmother not being there, but also the fact that she didn't see you in this light before she unfortunately passed away, and how did those last words maybe help carry you through that time? Like, What was that bridge like to get from the little Brenda that she wasn't too fond <laughs> of how you were behaving but believed in you right. to Miss We Care? Um, 
The journey has been difficult. Uh, one, just being in entrepreneurship, I'm sure as you know, is I tell people all the time, it's not for the faint of heart. You know, me and me and you, we come from a time of cleaning toilets. Like, let's keep it real. You know what I'm saying? Cleaning like, we, you know, nobody understands what it looks like um, before. They they just see, like, the, the shiny parts and the shiny pieces. Right. Like, I could just uh, sidebar, your marketing is bomb. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, you. your, your packaging is bomb, you know. But they see all that shiny stuff, but they don't see the before of it. And I think, for me... Um, it's, it's because of her that I got here, mm. you know. Um, it wasn't until she passed away that I was like, okay, forgive my mom. Like, what does that even look like? Wow. You know what I mean? Like, what, what does that even mean? Like, what does that even look like? But she had instilled that in me to explore what that looked like and what that even meant. And um, getting, her, getting here, is her, it was her constant voice. You know, that because to me, like I said, it was just like, it's her and then it's God. And you'll hear me say that continuously. So it's like, if I could just be a portion of what she was, if I could be a piece of that to somebody else, then I'm doing my part. See, she did her part. She did what she was put here to do. She done raised her kids, her, her kids, kids, and then her kids, kids, kids. And, you know, it's just like, she did that. And... You know, with having kids who dealt dealt with addiction and then having kids who, you know, uh, grandkids who are placed in the system, getting, you know, she's pulling them out the system to raise them to do what it is that she could. You know, it was just like I said, because of her, I'm here. And and, and I feel like I just want to be a portion of that. And if I'm a portion of that, then I'm doing her part. Then I'm living like I'm, I'm her namesake. I am carrying her name and I'm carrying it well. So it's like. You know, I don't know what everybody believes in or what they don't believe in. But me personally, I do believe there is a God or a higher power, you know. And I do believe that she's with me and that she's watching over me because I have these moments where it's like, that's like something she would say to me. Like, it could be a complete stranger, you know, like a complete stranger. Like, just like a really brief story, a really, you know, sidebar. I have actually been dealing with some things, some personal things, and I was having a complete um innocent conversation with a stranger the other day didn't know me from a like didn't know me at all we were literally having a conversation about women and how you know we don't take care of our cars right like right. that stigma and I was getting my oil change and he looked at me before he walked away he grabbed my hand just real gently and he said for a such he says for you to be such a pleasant girl you carry such heavy burdens so well mm. he did not know me you know what I mean? He was mm-hmm. a complete stranger. And I feel like I have these moments where she's reminding me on things that I need to work on or, you know, and it could be, it could come from just such a complete stranger, mm-hmm. you know? So that's, that's, that's amazing. And so many things you said, are honestly, and I'm not just saying this, like, I feel like you're echoing my story also. Uh-huh. And that it means a lot. What I always want the audience to, to hear is so many things that can help them in there. And what you're showing me is that because essentially and one thing where you were saying your grandmother was pulling pulling her grandchildren out of the system and, you know, doing all these things and teaching you to forgive. So specifically, I mean, that's what your whole mission and movement is right now is you're doing so much for the youth. So to see in this, I hear uh, purpose birthed out of pain. Absolutely. Something bigger than yourself, right? So the Way fact bigger. that so so the fact that your grandmother said that to you, it helps propel you. But then you also said that you can hear things, right? You hear and you feel like it's from her. And I've tried to explain this before to people that it's not that you actually say, like, I don't hear my grandmother saying, like, right. oh, Coley, I'm so proud of you. Yeah. you know, like, I don't hear yeah. that. But it's just like, like, you know that this is something that she would have said, just right. like you said. And so right. it gave me chills. And it's so beautiful to hear you talk about that and to be able to come to all that revel- revelation. Because there's a lot of people that I think the one thing you talked about, unforgiveness, is such a block. So uh. how did you... How did you even, so you said, when she said that to you, you're like, well, what is unforgiveness? What, what does that even look like, right? right? Because I feel like we might have that desire to do better and want to do better and have better, but not having that blueprint or knowing exactly what that looks like can be challenging. So how did you move into that space? Or are you still moving into that space of forgiveness to help you get on the other side of things with your mother to continue to help you be the best version of Brenda you could be? Um, I think that... I'm actually still forgiving. I think it's a continuous thing. 
you know, me and my my mother, we we didn't really have a relationship at all growing up. And like I said, um, I was an angry teenager. My mother never apologized to me, but something my grandmother always said to me was like, I had to forgive her, and I I didn't know what that looked like, you know, but I knew that I wasn't nice to her. You and weren't nice to your mom? No, I was not nice to my mom at all when I was a teenager. But what I had realized was, like, one day it was like, despite what it is she done to me or what she didn't do or what she wasn't for me, she birthed me. That is one of the greatest gifts that anybody could give anybody because if it was not for this woman that I may not care for so much, right, that I may have all this animosity and hurt and stuff built up against her, I still wouldn't be who I am if it wasn't for her. And with with me acknowledging that and then I also had to acknowledge she's human right but it's mind you I'm in my 20s at this point you know I'm not a 16 year old girl 14 year old girl no more I'm in my 20s at this point so it, honestly which is sad it took me to become an adult to realize that you know what she's human too and I don't know her story I don't know what she been through and honestly she probably did the best that she could do. Yo, you're like, like if I had money, guys, I don't have any in my pocket, but I would lay offering before this lady. Like you are <laughs> preaching, queen, like preaching. Like I'm, I'm forgetting that I'm actually interviewing you. I'm just like, go ahead. Like, you know, I, I'm in, uh, look, she is a motivational speaker. If that's what you call yourself. She, I you, hate if you myself that, but I, I, I don't call myself uh, that either. That's right, why I didn't yeah. know what to say. But I'm she, a creative, but creative. I, I speak to I and empower you. Have that you gift. you Thank have you. that gift. Like Thank you are on fire. You said so much there. And I learned this in therapy recently that wow, therapy is so good. Ain't listen, it? shout out to it, right? <laughs> therapy is the new wave. It's dope. But what I'm saying is this we have to keep people in context. Like you just said, your mother has a story. Before she was Brenda's mother, she was, was. whomever she is. Yes. Right. And and you said that it's a shame that it took that long, but I think it's such power in that because when we get to an adult status. Then you start thinking like, okay, if these were my cards, how would I have played them maybe without the best direction or battling an addiction at the same time or myself being abused or all of these things? Yep. Like, But when we're growing up, we can't see that. We can't see that. But that in itself was grief because you didn't have your parents. You didn't have them. So although Absolutely. they were alive, I didn't have them. you didn't have them. But you're speaking so much about the healing process. And a lot of it, it comes down to maturity. It, does. it comes down to putting that kid sh to the side. Bye. It really and does. How bad you want it, right? I mean, would you agree? I, I agree with you 100%. Um, I encourage people. That's actually something that I talk about with my kids a lot. Um, I'm, I'm big on trauma-informed care when it comes to me going into the school systems and stuff because I feel like, right, we are all going through things that nobody knows about, right? And here I was, this young girl who was, I was, you know, Unfortunately, but unfortunately, it's my gift that I have a story, but I, I really experienced some things. Like, I was sexually abused. I had two drug-addicted parents. I was physically abused. You know, I was abandoned. Like, I dealt with all those emotions. And even as an adult, like, I'm still working through those emotions, right? So even when it came to my mother, it was like, I didn't know her story. But when I started to learn bits and pieces about her story, see, what started to drop my guard was I started to empathize and sympathize with her pain. And then I also said, well, you know what? She wasn't strong enough to make it through it, but maybe she could look at me because everybody say I look like my mom, right? Mm -hmm. I got eight siblings and I'm the one that look <laughs> like my mom, right? So I said, well, maybe I can make her proud too to know that though I've been through similar things that she been through, I didn't choose drugs. That may have not been my addiction, you know what I mean? But being addicted to, in a sense, life and purpose and helping other people, you know, that's 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 what I'm addicted to. Like, honestly, that's what gets me through of knowing and realizing. It's funny how things come full circle. I had to get to a place, and I, and I still am here. I'm still, it's crazy. It's like, that wasn't for you. You didn't go through that for you. You went through that for somebody else. You know what I mean? And I think that us as people, we could be so selfish in moments of not understanding. And that's why, I, you know, like I said, I'm not here to preach, but it's like we're not supposed to lean on our own understanding. You understand what I'm saying? Proverbs so, 3, 5, 6. <laughs> you know, we're, look, I don't know the words, but you got Listen, it. <laughs> trust in the Lord like, with all thy heart. heart. Lean not until I own understand in all thy ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Right. And right. It's, we're not supposed to, but in those moments, we're feeling all of these 
temporary emotions, but we're not understanding either because we're like we're innocent going through certain things. So it's like forgiveness is definitely a big part of why I am here. And I definitely could agree with my grandmother and say that had I not forgiven my mom, I could have never made it here. I could have never made it in this spot that I am today, you know. Um, and like you said, grief does look different. And I've dealt with grief, you know, it's, it's nobody's exempt from it. Nobody. Nobody's exempt from it. But I think there are a lot of people who, one, are not aware of what that is, that deep sorrow, and, and then how that's showing up in their lives for mm. unhealthy coping mechanisms and healthy. And, like, for yourself, it seems like you've channeled that, not seems like you have channeled that for positivity, in those moments when you want to give up, you think greater than yourself. I think that a lot of people need to hear, like you, first of all, I mean, not first of all, but I, I pray and I speak this, right, that the book has got to be coming soon. Oh. It has to. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you said so many things that I see why the impact happens with your youth and your groups and your, and your organization and We Care and just having that because you talked about, so many different faces of trauma, abuse, sexual abuse, all those things you went through. So what do you think is the excuse for people who don't choose to overcome? Because I, I'm I'm thinking, right, like if I had to deal with some of your battles, you know, what would I do? And then, you know, other people might feel like, you know, just caving for something maybe less. So I guess as we kind of start to wind down here, I'm definitely curious as to how you look at that when people – let themselves stay behind the excuses of, well, this happened. I lost that person. I lost this person. This happened. I got that happened to me. I was abused here and all these things and just stay like completely stuck. This is me. And they start to use their trauma as personality traits. Hmm. That is so hard. So I, something I don't really talk about publicly is, um, you know, and I, I'm going to address it here because I just feel, you know, it's on my heart, but you know, like I actually do, I actually, I, I actually battled with depression, really, really like severe, like diagnosed was, you know, recommended to go on medication because I literally felt like I could not function. And then I always say just from dealing with it, I never knew what depression was. It was literally like I couldn't get out of bed for days and I was like Googling it and like, why am I feeling this way? And it came up. Right. So then it's like depression, anxiety and suicide. I say that they're like cousins. Right. Um, so I dealt with depression. I literally tried to take my own life and then I that led into having like anxiety or whatever the case may be. What I will say is that it's not easy. You know, it's not easy to deal with the traumas that you go through, the griefs that you go through. And then to and I'm not going to fake and say that I never was a why me or, you know, try to make an excuse for my actions. However, I think it goes back to knowing that it's something more than you, that you have to have something to hold on to, right? You have to have a piece of something to grasp hold on to, to give you a little bit of light, even though it's like, it's like a gleam. You don't really see it in the moment, but it's like it's something there that keeps you going. You have to hold on to whatever that something is for you. You know what I mean? Like there was in a moment in my life, it was my niece. It was my niece, my sister's daughter. You know, I was I was taking care I remember, of her. I remember when you had her. It's, it's, it's so crazy. Mm -hmm. And you probably didn't even know, like, in that time was probably one of my most trauma, traumatizing, trying times because I was dealing with depression. Wow. And had she not been with me, I would have made another attempt. I had, before I got her full time, I had made an attempt on my own life. Then I got her. And had she not been with me, I would have tried. I know I would have tried to make another attempt. But, but. She was that thing that I held on to. And I think that for some people, it's really their their circumstances, right? Um, and it's really whatever their beliefs is. Um, you know, you got to have a belief in something. I don't, you know, it may not be God, a higher power, the universe, whatever. I use the term universe, but you got to have a belief in something. And not only that, I'm really big on affirmation. I'm really big on speaking things into existence. I'm really big on training your mind. When that negative thought comes, you got to retrain it with a positive thought. You Can know? you give us some affirmations, Queen? Oh, my goodness. Uh, Don't act like you're not a poet. <laughs> I didn't pull the poet card. I didn't put you all the way on that spot. But oh listen, we're winding down here. You're bringing so much power, and you're talking about affirmations. I didn't have that planned, 
but I think that might be a good a good thing. Like, just what are some of the affirmations that help you? Because I was saying it about people in their lives, and not that I think people often purposely make excuses, but I think it's just sometimes you just don't have hope. Like, and, and hope is a simple Ooh. word to say, but like just to not have hope, to feel hopeless and powerless over your circumstances. Right. Like that's, that's crazy. So anything right. you have to offer um, with that. So, um, so one thing, um, I do say to myself a lot, it's funny. Um, I don't know if I heard it from you. It's crazy. Cause I, I feel like I just heard it, but it's like, how bad do you want it? Mm -hmm. So that's something that's one thing that I ask myself, like anytime I face any type of trial or tribulation or I feel like I'm being knocked off the playing field, I re-ask myself, how bad do you want it? Like, what are you actually willing to go through to get to what it is that you want? You know what I mean? Like if this goal and this dream is literally like right here, right in front of my face, like, but there is literally like a car crash and then I don't know, a plane flipped over. Like, what is it that you're willing to do to get to that, to go through those obstacles? Um, something I say to myself is that you are, you are better than just good. You're great. You know what I mean? I like so you're better than just good. You're great. Because like, sometimes everybody is like, oh, like, no, you're, you're good at what you do. You, you're good at what you do. But sometimes I can feel like that's like a, just a little pat on the back. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. that's, that's somebody being nice to me. You know what right. I mean? Like they're just being nice, but no, you're great. You know, you're better than what it is that anybody thinks about you. Believe in, before you, I always say to myself, before anybody believes in you, Brenda, you got to believe in yourself. Before anybody believes you believes in you, Brenda, you got to believe in yourself. And something else I say to myself is pain is just temporary. This is, this is, this is temporary. This hurt, this pain is temporary. You'll learn to, it'll never go away. Like right. I will always say, like with my grandmom's death, I, um, I remember writing a post about her a while ago. I said, this, I would never, um. I would never, you know, know the feeling of having her here still, but I would learn to know what it's like to exist without her. I would learn to, you know, live with it, but it doesn't have to be the thing that tears me down. I don't have to go into a deep hole because of it. The thing about it is, is like we could stay in these, we could stay in these moments for that moment, but that's it. We cannot stay there. We have to grow past that because that's what it is. Sometimes pain is meant for us to grow. It's testing us to see where it is that we can go. But that's where, like, we have to have our eyes on where it is we want to go. You got to so, create it. You got to see you gotta it there. You got to create it. And yeah. I always say that, too. Listen, the pain is inevitable, but the suffering is optional. Yes. That's what you said. Yes. And you have to accept that to learn to grieve well, to integrate that loss, and that you are going to have to exist without her. So what does that look like? You said so much here. Like, I, I'm, I wish we had so much more time. I do, want, I do want to jump into our In Love and Memory segment. It's a part of our show that is very important to us to humanize and highlight the lives of our guests and ourselves and people who submit their loved ones out there. It's very important for us to do that. So this week, our In Love and Memory segment goes out to the lovely Brenda's namesake, or she's her namesake, yes. her grandmother, Brenda Langford. Yes. So we want to send our in love and memory segments to her, our condolences to yourself and your family. I know it's been quite some time, and that's the part of it, is that I think it's, it's important to humanize and, and, and highlight a life that was once lived right. and look at you. So it was definitely lived well. And to your grandfather, unfortunately, he most recently passed away, and mm -hmm. we do send our prayer and love and strength to yourself and your family for the upcoming services as well. Yes. So you do have our love. Guys, you already know we're jumping into our inspirational boost is a part of our show that we like to get into. Give you a quote, something thought provoking that we have here. It is sponsored by Adina J Designs. They may create and inspire us who decorate apparel with signs, custom tumblers, all that good stuff. Go follow them over on Instagram at Adina J Designs, A-D-E-N-A-J-A-Y-D-S-I-G-N-S. -A -A -E Tell them that I sent you. Maybe you'll get a discount. This <laughs> week, uh, our, our quote here is grief. I've learned is really just love. It's all the love you want to give, but cannot. All that unspent love gathers in the corners of your eyes, the lump in your throat, and in that hollow part of your chest. Grief is just love with no place to go. That's beautiful right there. Wow. And it's and it's so real and it's so true. And we all go through and experience that those emotions. So that's our inspirational boost for the week. Guys, before I, before we get out of here, Brenda, I definitely have a question for you that I do ask all my guests. Mm -hmm. And that is, if you had to choose a color for your grief, what would it be and why? If I had to choose a color. And it can't be black because that's like the universal color for mourning. <laughs> oh, really? Um, well, I'm going to choose... My favorite color, I'm going to choose purple. Okay. 
Um, one is for royalty, and, and it's, it's close to black. It's close to that darkness, but once again, it still gives you some light. Mm. Um, it's still that, it's still dark, because I like that kind of like that dark, like royal purple, you know, and I like a, this real plum purple. It's, they're like my two favorite purples. So I feel like it's very, very close to like that darkness, but it still shows you you could go, you have light after darkness. Listen, mic drop, guys. Brenda, <laughs> Miss We Care, you have been a phenomenal, oh, phenomenal guest. Like, I'm telling you, we have to have you come back on the show. But before we get out of here, too, please let the people know where they can find you, where they can su support you. I know you have the upcoming HBCU. If you don't know what that means, Historically Black Colleges and Universities, yes. <laughs> taking our young people around, showing them what their lives can look like. So we want to find out how we can support you and all that good stuff. Okay. So you can follow me. At Miss We Care, M S W E C A R E, and um, we do have a up up and coming HBCU college tour that will be April sixteenth through the twentieth. Um, you could email me if you were looking for any type of information for it at info at Miss We Care dot org, and um, you could donate through our GoFundMe. I don't know exactly where it is but if you follow me on instagram you could go to the link in my bio and you can click it to donate and you could also cash at um the dollar sign we care do you all all together we care do you and um before i get out of here about that book i don't know that might be confirmation when i tell you that one everybody always says that to me but i ignore it because i don't i don't know if i'm ready for it like you said, people come on to this podcast and they're like, oh, no. But before I go, I want to encourage people to learn how to live in your truth. It has been one of the most difficult things that I've ever had to do in my life, but it has skyrocketed me to places that I never thought that I would go. So standing your truth and, and, and living your truth, and I promise you, it will take you to places you never thought that you could go. Amazing. Amazing. Like I said, Brenda, you have been a phenomenal guest, guys. If you want to have her come out to be a panelist, to speak at your organization, whatever you have, reach out to her. <laughs> you can reach out to me. I'll plug you with her. I'm honored to know her and to have her have her on the show. It's been a great episode, guys. Yes. We are wrapping up episode 29. Listen, go to our YouTube channel. The link is in my bio. You can also go to YouTube. Just type in Jay Nicole the Grief Bully. It absolutely will come up. You already know, I am your host, Jay Nicole. Please follow me on Instagram. It's where I hang out the most at I underscore AM underscore Jay Nicole. Guys, as always, you already know. Till next time, love and light. Peace.